the ideal engineer is a composite. He is not a scientist. He is not a mathematician. He is not a sociologist or a writer. But he may use the knowledge and techniques of any or all of these disciplines in solving engineering problems. Quote by Nathan W. Doherty, American civil engineer. I'm Olivia Augustin and this is English for Engineers. Hello and welcome to the English for Engineers podcast. I am seriously thrilled to jump into this podcast. It might sound odd, but I could talk about language almost all day long. Let me tell you a little bit about myself as this is the very first episode of my new podcast, And maybe we have never met before. So who am I and why should you listen to me at all? My name is Olivia Augustin and I'm a certified English teacher and business English coach. But I'm a civil engineer as well. Back in the day, um, I was specialized in infrastructure and I worked as a project manager for a small but mighty engineering office in Tyrol. Mighty means they were highly specialized. Um, and one day we ended up with a project in White Russia, in Belarus. And that was the very first time I was involved in an international project. But it was also a project that was done in three different languages. And for the first time in my professional life, I could bring my linguistic skills to the table. When we got that project in Belarus, I was the one engineer at our office who was fluent in English. And I also was the one engineer who studied Russian at the University of Innsbruck at that time. You know, for fun, because that's what you do in your spare time. So I ended up translating all the project documentation from German to English and from German to Russian. Very exciting times. And I like to think that was the moment I knew I'm going to work in linguistics one day. Because if there's some way to combine language with systematic thinking, that's the place where you're gonna find me. There's one sentence I have on my website and that's, my experience is your advantage. It sounds very marketing-ish, but what do I wanna say by that? So why is my experience your advantage? Because I've been part of the engineering world for about 15 years. I know your turf. I understand how challenging it can sometimes be to communicate with clients or subcontractors efficiently, let alone in a foreign language and across various cultures. Been there, done that. So here we are. My company, which is called Marcoda, exists because I understand one thing quite clearly, and that is that you need to learn business English and technical English quickly, and you want to do that without boredom and without struggle and without stress and without a grammar induced headache because you need this process from start to fluency you need to happen that smooth and fast so in 2019 when i finally started purely focusing on helping engineers master business english back then i've already been using my language skills for about 12 years and then Those 12 years, I help businesses and organizations to share their brand stories in multiple languages. I have translated and interpreted before I started coaching one-on-one. And now that I'm specialized in English for engineers, um, I can serve big companies and individuals all over Europe and Asia. And how do I serve them? Through what? Mm, I like to call it quite practical and no-nonsense lessons. So while... My company, Marcoda, is still the new kid on the block. My experience, my passion, and definitely my know-how are not. So, even though I love my engineering jobs, my heart was elsewhere. And that's always been helping engineers to become skilled communicators in English. That much about me. What are we covering in today's episode, besides that super lengthy introduction? Today, I want to share some tricks with you to get you started or some tips 
things that you can do even before you decide to take business English courses, even before you book your very first professional business English, technical English lesson. Because, you know, there are things you can do at home in your spare time that will help you tremendously. Some of the things that I'm mentioning now, uh, that I'm going to mention, are known as immersion technique, in case you want to Google that later. Number one, I want you to change your evening routine. Not too much, just slightly. Every night when you're in your bathroom and you're brushing your teeth, in your mind, tell yourself what you did that day. Use your target language, in our case that's English. Use the English you already know and just form the sentences in your mind. Use the grammar and the vocabulary you already know. And if there's a word or a certain sentence structure that you want to use, but you don't know how to use it in English, just substitute that with one word, with one part of the sentence from your mother language. Just use that one German, that one Dutch, that one Portuguese, that one Chinese word, whatever your mother language is. So and whenever you brush your teeth, just tell yourself what you did all day long. And it won't take long and speaking English becomes your second nature. Because let me tell you what happens. I'll give you a very basic example. Let's say you tell yourself, I arrived at the office at 8 a.m. Then I had a meeting with the, with the, oh man, what's the English word for Baustellenleiter? But who cares? You just use the German word. Then I had a meeting with the Baustellenleiter. So that was day one. Day two, you do a recap of your day again while you're brushing your teeth and you tell yourself this afternoon the uh, Bauleiter called me and again you just use the German expression for the word you're looking for in English. By day three you're so annoyed with yourself that you look that word up, that you look up that word in the dictionary. The dictionary will give you four alternatives most likely for Bauleiter. There will be construction supervisor, construction manager, site manager or foreman, depending a little bit um, on the circumstances. But there you have it. By just talking to yourself and getting angry with yourself, because it's such a basic word that you didn't know, you learned four new words. Isn't that amazing? And that works with almost anything. The next tip I'm giving you is actually one of my favorites. And it's fun. Go to your streaming account, that may be Netflix, that may be Amazon, whatever is out there, and change your language, language settings of your favorite show to English audio and subtitles. So what happens? You're watching a movie, you're watching a TV series, and you're watching it in English. So the language input, it's through your ears, you hear it. And because it's your favorite show, you can easily follow uh, the storyline. But by having the subtitles in English as well, you also get language input by reading. So it's like double the trouble, but in a good way. Number three, listen to the radio. Okay, we're doing that, most of us, when we're sitting in the office, when we're driving uh, home, when we commute home, when, in the, when we are in a car. But listen to music that has lyrics with full sentences. That cuts out hip hop and rap. So go for country or singer songwriter stuff. Not because that's my favorite kind of music, but because it has lyrics with full sentences. And that helps you getting a grip regarding language, uh, regarding sentence structure and word order. So in my case, when we moved to the Netherlands 10 years ago, it meant that I was listening to Dutch folklore for half a year. It was torture, but it worked. It was necessary to get the melody of the language into my brain. Tip number four, find a study buddy. Someone, for example, you can regularly exchange text messages with. And hello, autocorrect, your spelling and vocabulary will improve tremendously. Alternatively, if your spouse, your partner is quite good at speaking English and they are willing to help you out, you could agree on 10 to 15 minutes a day where you solely speak English. 
So watching TV and listening to the radio is all about language input. Self-talk, adding a study buddy, singing along is called language output. Both are equally important because high quality input produces high quality output. If you prefer to reread that information on a PDF, then I have a little gift for you. If you go to marcoda.org slash five tips fluency, you can download a free PDF resource um, with a recap of the tips I just gave you. But there's a certain point when those DIY techniques will have reached their limit. And you need more structure and a system to further grow your business and technical English skills. And that's when you need to change your strategy again. And you might want to call me your trusted word nerd, and then we can develop a strategy uh, to reach your goals. What can you expect from this podcast in the future? The primary reason for this podcast is that I want to provide you with interesting language input. I'm going to share tips and tricks regarding technical English and business English and English business communication across cultures. That's for sure. But I also want to share scientific research that is backing up language learning techniques but because why that's logical we are engineers hello and we like to know the why before we do stuff Um, i also plan on interviewing quite interesting people from all over the place so you can get used to different accents and maybe you get used to different ways of seeing the world that would be nice and they always those guests, they're always going to have a connection with engineering in general, of construction, with technical English or with business communication. That was it for today's podcast. Looking forward to talking to you soon, my friends.